And I'm part of this. I'm part of changing my world. You're welcome to the program Education Focus right here on Radio Global. I'm Yvonne Richards and I'm your anchor on this program. Well, today we're going to be talking about uh, a very, very, very important topic and it is concerning counselling in schools. Uh, why do you believe that counselling is of great importance in any school? Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about today on the program Education Focus. I have a lovely guest in the studio. Her name is Mrs. Adeyemi and um, she's an English teacher at the Lagos City Senior College, uh, Sabo Yaba. So we'll be talking together concerning this particular topic. So don't go nowhere, we'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. The future has The future has come right here on Radio Global and uh, the program you're listening to right now is Education Focus. For people who are just joining us uh, right now, I have a guest in the studio and her name is Mrs. Adeyemi. So Mrs. Adeyemi is an English teacher at the Lagos City Senior College, Sabo Yaba. Hello Ma, how do you do today? I'm fine. Well, uh, thank you very much for being able to um, get here. Thank you very much. So we're talking about counselling. Um, what do you see as counselling or what do you believe counselling is? Uh, in my own opinion, uh, counselling is all about assisting students to identify their potentials and 
guiding them in realizing them. A counselor is that professional personnel who has been trained in these aspects. Uh, not only identifying the potentials and guided them, he also encourages the students who have difficulties in their studies or with their studies and he helps them to identify those areas of difficulties and he helps them to overcome them. Okay. Yeah. You spoke about potentials right now uh, that a counsellor tends to help these children uh, discover their potentials but I would like to find out in what way uh, can they help these children? Okay. Uh, in, if you ask a student what he would like to become, it's likely mm -hmm. you hear, I want to become a doctor, I want to become, you know, an engineer. And um, all the students may not have an idea of how to become these doctors and the no, nurses yes, that they want to become. So it is a counselor. Who will tell them the requirements, what subjects they can choose to lead them to that height. Okay. So have we spoken about um, counseling in itself? Now, what do you say a counselor is? Uh, like I said, a counselor is that professional personnel who helps or assists students, assists is the word, who assist students to identify their potentials. He identifies the students' needs. We have some students in school who are seriously in need. Um, they will be, most of them do not want to talk to anybody. They will come to school and uh, they exhibit one form of behavior or the other. It is the duty of that counselor to identify to notice for instance if a student is a truant he comes late to school it doesn't come at all it is the counselor who we identify who oh, this boy is having so this problem how can we help him uh, i don't believe uh, anybody can i believe anybody can be a counselor if you are a teacher you are naturally supposed to be a counselor. A counselor yes. You counsel because you are, you must have interest in your students and you must know everything that happens to them. If a child comes in hungry, you should be able to notice. Then think of how to assist. Oh, all right, I think I get to you right there. And uh, just like what you said. Uh, the job of a counselor and things like that so what does it tend to entail now is it just you identifying the potentials and other things like that what does counseling in itself entail counseling we have uh, three aspects of counseling the first one is the educational counseling which has to do with uh, the academic work the students academics uh, this one, they, they come to school, they want to learn. How they go about it, it's a teacher that guides them, I mean, a counselor that, that guides, guides them. them. Then outside this, we have um, psychosocial, psychosocial counseling. This has to do with their, their emotional issues. A child who comes in frowning. You will, you will automatically know that something is wrong. We have some who come from broken homes. Some who live with their uncles, who will be asked to go to school without giving them transport fare. When they come, they come in tired. Within the first 30 minutes they get to class, they sleep. When you see such a student, you should, you know, invite him and ask him what is actually wrong it's not you punishing him right away ask him what is wrong with him 
you understand that is a counseling you might not be you know a teacher will do this not necessarily a professional counselor but it is better if it to be handled by a professional Okay. Yeah. So a teacher will identify and direct to the counselor, the counselor okay. whose job is to handle it and prefer solutions. Okay, because I know a whole lot of teachers themselves tend to uh, take those issues and then try to uh, treat them, but in a way they're not able to do it properly yeah. uh, in the long run. Yes, that's what I just said. That we have there are certain levels that a teacher can go to as a counselor you might be doing it but may not be doing it right that is where a professional counselor comes in what you think is abnormal when the counselor sees it he has a different explanation to it so when you identify this direct to the counselor mm -hmm. the professional counselor so we have this the third aspect, aspect. of counseling is a the fo vocational aspect which has to do with the career choice of the students which is really why they are in school that is what will make them to realize that potential that they, they have okay all right, thank you very much, Mel. We're still talking right here concerning counseling on Radio Global, and the program is education focus. And I said before that my guest in the studio is Mrs. Adeyemi, and she's a teacher, yes, an English teacher at the Lagos City Senior College, Sabo Yaba. So, we're still talking about the importance of counseling. Uh, why do you believe it's important for a school to have a counseling unit? A whole lot of people will tell you that, oh, I have teachers in my school. Uh, why do I still need to have a counselor? What's the job of a counselor? It's not just to wake up in the morning and just show his or her face in school. But I tell you, it is more than that. Uh, a school should have a counseling unit. It is very, very, very important. We'll still talk more, but we want to take a short break. And uh, when we come back, we'll be talking more concerning counseling. Stay with us. Trapped inside an ordinary girl She looks just like me Where he says I am, I know who I am. 
I know who I am. I'm the future of my world. Yeah, I'm that generation uh, who the world is looking up to to change the world. You're still listening to Education Focus right here on Radio Global. My guest is still in the studio. Her name is Mrs. Adeyemi and uh, she's from Lagos. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's from Lagos City Senior uh, College, Sabo Yaba. And uh, she's right here in the studio discussing with us uh, concerning counseling in schools. So what is that need of counseling? What do, what do you believe uh, counseling uh, does in schools? Does it help the children? Does it uh, make a, a positive impact? in their lives or what does it do really uh, that's what we're looking at today so i would also like to find out um why it's important to have a counseling unit in a school yeah thank you it is very very important because the age we are in now is a volatile age and um, it reflects in the activities of the students in schools uh, from like i said a counselor identifies the students needs the students who are in need and he helps them to overcome their challenges we have so many challenges in school we have students who are who play truancy we have those who uh cultists those we have rape cases drug abuse child abuse and some with academic issues okay i'm not sorry to cut you short on that uh, you mentioned a part of cultism uh, do you believe that that one in itself to shows facing um or tends to uh come up even in secondary school do we have uh, any form of that in the secondary school yes we do we do because um all these things when you s- get to the university and you see cultists it does not it it doesn't stand there. it doesn't start there it starts from home we have homes where the parents are cultists and uh, a cultist they say begets you know a cultist if you're a cultist definitely your child is likely to be a cultist so if a child is a cultist, when he gets to school, you see it in him. So we have cases of that. That those are the students that you see coming to school with knives, with cordials and uh, all dangerous weapons. They hide it in their bag, and the parents may not know. It is the student, the teachers that will know when they get to school. So these cases must be specially handled if we shy away from the fact that it doesn't happen then it is dangerous it happens we see them day to day so it is a counselor that invites such students in order not to you know uh, influence other students negatively we have some that might be sent to you know a higher authority for better counseling and uh, all sorts of that. Not that okay. And um, if we're looking at uh, uh, teachers now, also counseling the children, now having a counseling unit as well, doing it, also having it at a higher form. But really, don't you think uh, both uh, tend to collide in a way? Looking at the job of a teacher now, of a counselor. Yes, it's actually like in public schools it doesn't really collide okay a counselor in a school is not given as much the volume of work that will be given to her is going to be lighter than that than of, that of a teacher a teacher so, but i still have the opinion that a counselor should not be part of the, should not be a teacher in the school one if a counselor is a teacher this some of the students will not want to bear out their minds because they believe there is no confidentiality but if it's somebody that they don't know they would want they will believe him 
I, I want to, to really say something. I, I know that I noticed that, especially about secondary school children now. I want to invite a speaker, a motivational speaker, to talk in school. Someone we'll who they've not heard of. A whole lot of them are so excited. Yes. Uh, they feel so elated, so happy yes. to see that person. Yes, so, yes. That's why I said it is better for a counselor to come from outside. Uh, career counseling is being organized on, you know sessional basis we will invite uh, people from different career we have doctors we have uh, nurses and lecturers and all sorts of people who come to come and give them a talk so as for the students to know what they want to become and what lies ahead of them future okay yeah, right. right so uh, still talking about all of these uh, does counseling in itself have to do with one particular gender because some uh, people will tell you that oh I believe the boys need to be counseled more than the girls and so what's your opinion about this my opinion is <coughs> about it is that all students need counseling in fact you'll be surprised that the boy you said needs better it's counseling more. that you <laughs> see some girls that are so terrible mm. more even more terrible than the boys so what do you say about that so it's all of them both boys and girls that need counseling you see counseling you see it's to the girls who are abused who have been raped who is a cultist who is into drug, all these people need to be counselled. And they are girls. We see them on daily basis too. So it's not only boys that need their counselling. Girls too do need as much as the boys. You need counselling. Okay. Yes. Well, it was just brought about because a whole lot of people have this sort of opinion that, okay, uh, this gender should be counselled more, this one should be counselled more, mm. that really just came about because of this uh, certain uh, discussions by some certain people. I think the only aspect where a girl needs uh, better counseling is uh, in, the, in the area of sex education. You know they are always on the receiving end yes, when, when it happens. happens. So we have them and they are so fragile we, a counselor has to tell them how to comport themselves, you know, how to behave in public so as not to attract unnecessary attention, attention to themselves. To, to, that is the only area which I think they need a better counseling. Okay. Uh, what of the boys? <laughs> what would you say considering the them? boys? The boys, their own area is cultism, drug abuse, even rape. We have cases, not in our school anyway. We have, we've had cases of boys raping girls in school. In school, it does happen. So, boys, such boys, immediately they come into the school. The counselors, the counseling unit will organize a talk. They will talk to them. They will, you know, reel out offenses that are criminal and can make them to be sent away from school and you know all these things they will get, get get them accustomed to them so when they do it and they are punished they will know why they are punished all right we're still talking to mrs adeyemi and uh, she's right here in the studio and we're discussing on uh, the importance of uh, having a counseling unit in your school so right now if you're a principal listening to us if you're a teacher out there listening to us or even a parent uh, how important do you believe a counseling unit is uh, so right now is it that uh, when you get to the meeting in school would you suggest to the school if that school doesn't have a counseling unit that okay this is the reason why this particular school should have a counseling unit. I believe it's something that we all should think about uh, because um, the counseling unit in itself tends to help our children even more than we know. Mrs. Adeyemi is right here in the studio, so don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. We are the 
Yes, we do know that we are the future of the world. We're still right here for you on Radio Global, where we are redefining your radio experience. Uh, in the studio with me is Mrs. Adeyemi, and we're talking about counselling, uh, why we believe counselling is important in every school. Well, I would still like to find out um, if it's good for a school to have uh, a counselling unit in it in inside the school premises or uh, maybe employing the services of um, uh, um, uh, some counselors in order to uh, counsel the children in the school um, right now the the option that is being you know practiced by the government is that of having a counseling unit in the school being aided by a professional counselor who is equally a teacher in the school. But they do it, they go hand in hand with counselors, with, with the parents. We have parents forum, we have uh, people from the districts, from the government, government representative who come together when there is a problem, they come together and uh, they they decide on what the nature of case is. Uh, the other aspect, the other one that we're comparing is not, I mean, having a counseling unit in the school, but not being headed by a school teacher. teacher. The, one, the option we are practicing now is very good. But that aspect, the only flaw I see there is that students, always feel reluctant they don't want to talk to teachers because they believe though it is pasted everywhere that counselors are your My friends, friends. <laughs> counselors will keep your secret secrets but they still do not believe 100 percent that what they go in there to tell their teacher it, the students will not hear later or other teachers will not, not hear be later. informed so there is there was a particular student whose parents had the, the father had a problem and it was though telling on the students he was not given money no money no transport fare no money to eat he was just behaving one kind of school when we noticed we took him to the counselor he was cancelled there was nothing this counselor did not say the boy never uttered a word Said because he believed if that the teacher, teacher will <laughs> would divulge the secret, mm. he didn't up till now, he didn't say anything. Mm. So, when it would be uh, some maybe weeks later, he, I invited him, he told me he would not say anything concerning that case. We offered to give him transport, but I said no because he believed if we should give him. Will see, tell others that That's one way or the mm -hmm. other, somebody will know. But if it were to be somebody he never Not knew sad. from Adams, I believe he would have told, he would have expressed his mind. And whatever solution the person prefers, he will believe you. Mm. That is just the only thing I see about that. All right. Well, it's well said because a whole lot of students will tell you that, okay, why do I need to talk to somebody who is already in my school? Uh, they, they get very familiar with uh, most of their teachers. So to express their minds towards them, they believe that, oh, my teacher will tell this friend of his or hers and uh, that person will use it against, against them. them. So that's the reason why that's a lot the of only them... Flaw. Yes. Though they try as the counselors try as much as possible, but the human aspect of it, you can't rule really, it really out. So that is the only trust that the, the students will not have in the counselors within. All right. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, my, now to <laughs> now we we we've, we've, we're done with counselling. Mm -hmm. So I want to go straight over to you. So uh, as a teacher, you teach for long hours. You teach a whole lot of students, mm -hmm. and you know teaching in itself has to do with. Uh, I know that even as a teacher, you might have your weekends off, 
but still you're still in the process of uh, teaching your children writing one or two things down making sure that the work for the week is already uh, in progress so how do you tend to relax as a teacher um, we do we do relax though a teacher's work does not end by 3 30 because a responsible teacher when he leaves 3 30 he gives assignments and uh, when he gets home, he marks. So the little time we have, we relax. I relax with my family. I love dancing a lot. When oh, I right. finish, <laughs> All right. and seriously, you know, I, I noticed that because uh, when Mrs. Adeyemi walked into uh, the studio, I knew there was a particular song playing, and I, I noticed that she was nodding her head, uh, trying to tell us that okay, she can feel uh, the rhythm of <laughs> the song. That's the way I, I relax. When I get home, my husband is a lawyer. He doesn't come home on time. When I finish, before I start cooking, I will just play music and dance myself. That's <laughs> 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 nice. So, um, now your profession, how do you uh, tend to cope with uh, the bulk of work you have to do as a teacher? You have to run a home, you have a farm, you have children, mm -hmm. uh, you still have other duties here and there. How do you tend to cope? How do you tend to uh, put all these things together? It's easier for me because um, I've passed that childbearing stage, stage and um, it's easier. When I get home, my children are not the ones that I'll be running after again. So it's very, very easy. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Oh, all <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, I hope they are of the age where they can cook for themselves and do yes, some other things yes, like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. They are all, some have graduated. All right. Only That's one in the university. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, now I understand, really. I do. Yeah. All right, we've been talking on counseling right here on Education Focus, and I hope all of you have been able to learn one or two things uh, concerning counseling. So now when you see a school who does not have a counseling unit, uh, if you are a parent or you are a teacher, you could at least say, okay, this is the importance of this counseling unit. Uh, why don't we have one in our school uh, for the children in order to help them to improve on their potentials and make them better people in life? Thank you very much, Mrs. Ademi, for being our guest on today's program. Thank you. And we hope that when we call on you sometime, you'll be able to come. Surely. All right. God willing. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, ma'am. You're very welcome. Yes. Um, to all of you out there who have been listening to us on Education Focus right here, uh, we just want to tell you that go out there. If you are a student, be the best that you can be in your studies and in all aspects of your life. So to schools out there, counseling is important and you should all have a counseling unit in your school. So until we come your way, same time, same place, I'm Yvonne Richards. Bye for now. Don't ever give up on me. Comes in.